I um, <laughs> the thing is with that, right? Chelsea was were in control of the game. Uh, they, they, it would have been a shock if Chelsea hadn't won that game. I don't think the the red card significantly contributed well, it help. to what was going on. No, of course not. And we'll <laughs> never know what would have happened. But it wasn't like West Ham were completely dominating and then the red card changed everything. I, I think that's that, that's the way well, I see it. It can change things, though, eh? You, you know, yeah, it um, can, but it, were, were West Ham dominating and then they were Well, they don't have no. to dominate a game to score a goal. I appreciate that. But it didn't change the game, did it? It didn't go from one thing to another. We'll no. never know what would have happened, hmm. and they've got the decision but wrong. Part, but, but that's part of getting the decision wrong that, that was bad, though, wasn't it? That's why They've overturned it now, which is great for him, but it's shocking, but it could have affected him because of the, 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 how much was at stake in that game. Correct, right, and this is, this is the point. You're absolutely spot on. We'll never know VAR what would have happened. got it wrong. I know, this is the thing, right? VAR... It's gone to VAR. They've had a look at it and said to the ref, you they've need to go and have a look wrong. at it. They've all had another look at it, and they've all got it wrong. So now we'll never know if West Ham would have gone <laughs> so, on to win it. So they've had another VAR session, not live, and they've all come to the conclusion, uh, I think they got it wrong. But this is what I was saying the other day. You know when I had that little rant on Monday, and, it, and it, I didn't want to go into detail about how wrong this decision was or how wrong that decision Overall, have we stopped having, you know, really shockingly bad decisions no we haven't we've still got them is this really better than it was before was it any worse than this before i think it's worse now and we've got a what we said was we're, we were all accepting var because by the end of the season we'd have ruled out those big errors that really changed things over the course of a season well you've just seen yet again second season of var and they've messed it up we'll never know what would have happened to west ham they're on 55 points, Chelsea on 58, because Chelsea won that game. Mm, if, Bal if Balbuena stays on, as he should, most of us realised, apart from Jason Cundy, most of them realised, most of us realised, it was never a red card. But because that referee on the pitch is told to go and have a look, it's in his head, maybe I should change it, he keeps looking at it, looking at it, all he sees is studs in the calf, no, it doesn't matter how they got there for him, he sees studs in the calf and thinks, right, that's my reason to show a red. I'm going to show a red. And he's got it categorically wrong as proven tonight because the red has been overturned well, like I said and at the end of the season if West Ham just miss out on Champions League mm. by a point or two this is going to go on and on and on because they've had is that, well they've basically admitted now but they got it wrong so we're no better off no that's what I'm saying it's a massive moment they couldn't have picked a worse game they could not have picked a worse moment for this to happen with VAR with only a few games left of the season, and it's so close at the top. Can you imagine if West Ham miss out on Europe full stop? I mean, what 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 could what really should happen here? I mean, bear in mind, this isn't just an honest mistake from a referee. This is VAR. This is a lot of people, relatively speaking, a number of people looking at this incident and then going to a screen, the referee looking at it again and getting it badly wrong. And that's affected West Ham. It could affect their future as a football club. And this was the whole point of VAR, that we bring it in so that we don't have these gargantuan errors. <laughs> well, this and yet could we're be, getting them. This could be the difference between them keeping Declan Rice. It's not qualifying for Champions League. Mm. So there's so much at stake here for West Ham. And I reckon West Ham fans will be fuming. Correct. Uh, if fuming. You, if you want to be, now. If you want to be fuming on this show, feel free. 08717 What I would also say is this, that there has to be some sort of recourse here. When you subscribe to VAR, when you vote to bring it in, then I think that there has to be some sort of subsequent action when VAR or the referee in, in place gets it so badly wrong. Now, what can happen here? Can, can you replay the game? I mean, is that even possible? I don't know. I mean, but it doesn't seem fair, does it? Well, it doesn't, and they can't do anything. But the thing is now, it's, it's all on West Ham. West Ham now... It gives them something, firepower, to go back. And at the end of the season, if they miss out, it might not be them. Listen, they might be way down. But they could miss out on Europe, whether mm. it be Europa League or Champions League, purely because an absolute error by not one person, by more. And then gets turned over three days later. It's, it's embarrassing. It, it really is. VAR came in to stop this. Mm. So they've not only got... Referee had a choice. He didn't think it... Goes to VAR, they got it wrong, and now they've had to go to another committee who overturn it. It's just so wrong, isn't it? But how do we put it right? Richie's a West Ham fan. What do you want to say, Richie? Well, how do you 
you, to be honest with you, to start off with, you, you was wrong in saying that West Ham weren't in the game, right? Because like, no one was in control. I said that, they weren't probably. dominating it, but, which they weren't. Yeah, nor were Chelsea. Nor were Chelsea. That's true. We don't know what, what's going to happen, OK? But at the end of the day, the referee has made the worst decision ever. The guy in the box at Stockley Park has made the worst decision ever to even look at that, OK? Right? That's the second time it's happened to us this season. It happened against Fulham as well, that we had two players sent off and it's been rescinded. Um, but the thing is, if you look at earlier, Christensen took Jesse Lingard down by the neck. In rugby, that's a red card and a free match ban. In football, it's a yellow card. So why has that not been looked into? Is that not a clear and obvious mistake? I'm just really angry with VAR at the moment because I think the mistakes... But also, they should come out afterwards and apologise to the fans and the people because that was a good game until the referee spoiled it on Saturday. And he absolutely spoiled it by sending that player off. I want to I want to find out. I mean, I think this is one of those instances where that referee needs to come out and really explain why he made the decision. I think we might actually have some sympathy for him. He might actually explain to us the flaws with VAR. The he's seeing different angles. He's seeing too many angles. Angles. He's being made to overthink it. His initial instinctive reaction was no red card, and that was spot on. Mm -hmm. So how has he gone through a process where he's overturned that decision in his head and turned it into a red card? What has he seen? Why has that happened? Because if we find that out, then they can stop showing those things, whether it's a slow-mo, a still, various angles, whatever it is. Well, going back to the referee, I don't think that's the right decision. They're going back to him because they're basically, as I said to you before, Red, on this, they go back to him, he's, he's got self-doubt in himself. Mm. He's running over there thinking, mm, must have got, they must have seen something I've not seen. And it puts doubt in his mind straight away. As soon as he runs over to that screen. Well, listen, Balbuena's red uh, for West Ham against Chelsea it has been overturned. It means he can play against Everton. It means he's uh, available for West Ham. But it can't change the defeat for West Ham against Chelsea, which was so crucial live on TalkSport on Saturday. It's three, a shocker. You know I mean, two, um, two or three people have got that badly wrong when everybody else thought it was a normal tackle. Liam has tweeted saying West Ham may have been beaten 2-0 with 11 men. Yeah, well, they might have been, but we, we'll never know. That's the point. <laughs> he says you can't come out like it's cost the game. We haven't. We've said we, nobody will know, Liam. That's the point. Nobody will know. But the whole point of debating it and discussing it is because... VAR was brought in so that we didn't have such terrible decisions. Howlers. Howlers, exactly right. That's the word. Howlers that decided placings come the end of the season. That's a howler, it, and VAR has made the howler. Yeah, and it's given West Ham firepower. That's what it's given them. And the annoyance the fans will be feeling at this moment in time because of the season they've had and the run they've been on, if they miss out by one or two points, this will get brought up again and again and again. You know what I mean? That's, that's what happens. It's football. Mike says, last year you were complaining refs not looking at the screen. Now it's wrong. Make your mind up, Adrian. Mike, I've always made my mind up from the very off. Goffey will back me up. I didn't want VAR. I didn't want screens at the side. I didn't want people at Stockley Park. I do not want VAR. I've been consistent with that. Uh, and John in Birmingham says, VAR changed the record. Most mistakes are made by players and managers. They make loads of mistakes that cost the result of a game. VAR is a scapegoat. Are you for real? <laughs> Why is VAR brought in? Why are we spending loads of money paying officials to sit in a box? Why are we doing that? It's so that we don't have howlers. And here we are. It's no better. It's probably possibly worse than it was before. Five or six errors out on Monday from the weekend because of VAR. So it's no better than it was before. I would say it's worse. So why are we bothering? Why, why are we persisting with it? Steve's a West Ham fan. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I agree with you totally, Adrian. Great, good show, boys. Um, I agree with you totally. I think that it, VAR is a machine. It's not the machine making the decisions. It's people, and the people are getting it badly wrong, even though they should know better. And I don't know if it's because the refs are getting worse and worse and worse, or if they just don't want any responsibility. It, to me, Saturday was just a joke. It just, like you said, it ruined the game, and we'll never know what might have happened. I agree with you, mm. and we that's the thing. We'll never know. We can't sit here and say West Ham would have got a draw or a win. Or we, we'll nope. never know. And, and Chelsea might have won 2-0. Yep. But that's the... But we will never know. It has... Sending him off has had an impact. They've had to rearrange things. 
They've had to they've changed the way they form. Well, do, you know, do you know something, Aid? I'm, I'm watching a game here on TV. Uh, there's a cricket game going on in the IPL, whether you agree with it or not. And they've just done a review about uh, to one of the players. He's out now, Stoinis, but to, to this leg spinner. And it, the umpire gave it not out. They showed the review, and he won't even stick with the umpire's decision. It was out, right? It was dead. It was hitting halfway up middle stump. And they've made a right howler. They've got message back to him. He's still giving it not out. And Ricky Ponting, whose players at, who should have been given out, is going like that. Even he doesn't understand what's going on. So they've actually made a howler there when it's so plain to see for everyone. You can't get that wrong. So even the the the, the coach, or the the player that's got let off, he's saying, well, it's how. Yeah. How crazy. can he get that bad wrong? So they're even getting technology. They're getting that wrong. And that's an absolute... They're showing it's so easy. You can't... You cannot mistake it. Is it enough for the stumps? Steph's a West Ham fan. What do you want to say? Hello, Hold Steph. them to account. Hold them to account. They need to have somebody regulating them. These guys, these referees, they are judge and jury. This is the second red card we've had overturned. Nobody is investigating them. Nobody is looking at what they're doing. They're just giving these red cards with impunity, and it doesn't matter, and it's on to the next game. It needs to stop. Well, they do get they do get assessed every single game, and they do go, they'll have people that talk to them after each game about their performance, what they think they get. They have assessors, don't they, Ed? The, 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 the referees and assessors, yeah. But yeah. I think the I, I think Steph's got a great point in that you've got people sitting in the box. It's the same names week in, week out, or rotating between doing games and in the box. And listen, I, I actually think the they don't deserve the heat on them so much. I think that they are victims of a system that was brought in when we didn't know. Nobody knew. They hadn't worked it out. They kept trying to iron out problems as they were happening during a season. We've seen law changes throughout the course of a season. They literally didn't know how to work it properly. And it's been enforced on football. Now, you think about... People talk about money in the game and how we've got to get it right and everything's got to be right. Players have got to be right. They've got to be fit. They've got to behave properly. Everything's got to be so perfect. And yet we're doing this patchwork, fix it as you go along, nonsense VAR. And and where Steph is right, I I'm not really looking at the individuals involved because I think the referees, to a certain extent, are a victim. I wouldn't have a go at the referee for sending off Balbuena. I think his head has been filled with doubt by the people at Stockley Park and then going over to the screen and he doesn't know what he's looking at anymore. When he acted off instinct because he knows the game and he's refereed loads of games, I think he's more likely to get it right. When he's got to keep looking at things and being told, oh, go and look at it, he's going to have well, doubts. It's, it's like the offsides with the lines. He's a bit... If you take the lines away and you look at it, most of them you'd say, ah, that's, that's onside. But when they put the lines there, whew, it's a toenail offside, <laughs> which is right by the, the law. It is offside. But that's when it gets complicated, and that's what mm. I think the annoyance of people, because if you looked at it with the naked eye, most of them you'd say, ah, benefit of doubt, it's onside. What we'd say, I, I, I am firmly of the belief VAR is not fit for purpose, and we're seeing it again. We've seen a major... Howler in a massive game that's gone against West Ham, and there's no getting those points back. VAR not fit for purpose.